Well, I'm pleased that you joined me today to partake of communion. We're working this week from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me. This is week 29, Communion, Meal for Overcomers. On a certain day, Jesus took the lunch of a little boy and fed a multitude of people until they were satisfied. They perceived that Jesus was a prophet and they concocted a plan to take Jesus by force to make him their king. He left and went into the hills alone. Jesus knew that they sought him because he provided their physical needs. He seized this moment to call them to total commitment to him. He presented them with heaven's menu for overcomers. John 6.35 says, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. This statement set the Twitter accounts ablaze. The people gonged Jesus because they didn't like his performance. But Jesus didn't stop there. In verses 50 through 51, he says, This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. This caused a quarrel amongst the Jews. How can this man... Give us his flesh to eat. The next two verses say this. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Many disciples left that day and walked with him no more. They had no stomach for the meal of overcomers. They were only interested in their own bellies. Their commitment was restricted to themselves. They were lackeys of the prince of darkness. <laughs> a lackey is one who does menial tasks and runs errands for, for another. They were overcome by spiritual wickedness in high places. When we truly grasp the power of the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of his body on Calvary, the communion elements are transformed from a cup of juice and a wafer or a piece of bread into a meal for overcomers. And why do I say this? I base this on a scripture from the last book of the Bible, Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Who is the him in this verse? The him is the accuser of the brethren. An accuser is a plaintiff. An accuser is one who charges another with an offense. The him and this is the serpent of old called Satan and the devil. His name describes his nature and his mode of operation. Satan means accuser. In other words, the devil hinders and even stops our progress in God by presenting a case against us to establish our guilt. He is the skilled and cagey attorney party who brings charges against us. So the devil accuses us to ourselves until we embrace and acknowledge our guilt. However, he is a liar and the father of all lies. He causes shame with falsehood and misrepresentation. His accusations are false because the Bible says that we are justified by the blood of Jesus. We are declared, rendered, and regarded as being free from guilt. Praise the Lord. We're no longer dead in our sins as a result of the fulfillment of God's purpose in Jesus Christ. Look at, listen to 1 John 3, 5, the Phillips translation. You know, moreover, that Christ became man for the purpose of removing sin, and he himself was quite free from sin. John the Baptist recognized Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We overcome the accuser by the blood of the Lamb, by knowing what the blood has done for us. Jesus has closed the case of the wily and underhanded attorney. The devil has no accusations that will stick unless we allow them to stick. He can only use our past against us. But listen to 2 Corinthians 5.19. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. God does not have a file with a record of your sins. <laughs> he brought you back into a harmonious relationship with himself, and he's not counting you guilty even though you got off track. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, God didn't leave us in the clutches of sin. He didn't abandon us to the mercy of the accuser. 
Romans 3, 24 through 25. But by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through Christ Jesus, who sets them free. God offered him so that by his blood, he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. That's Romans 3, 24 through 25, the good news translation. When the accuser presents his case against you, he withholds the blood evidence. He definitely doesn't bring the book of Romans to his court of folly. Listen to the Romans 5, 9. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So you overcome his burden of proof with this ironclad evidence. God has justified you by his blood, the blood of Christ. He has declared you innocent. The blood of Christ has made you free from legal guilt or fault. Let that soak in. I presented you with a number of scriptures today to turn the elements of communion into a meal for overcomers. Revelation 12, 11 also says that we overcome our enemy by the word of our testimony. We subdue, conquer, and prevail over the accuser with the word of God, indisputable evidence that the devil is already defeated. If we don't bring the word to the court of justice, the evidence of the prosecution will be stacked against us. We will surely be pressured into a confession of our guilt. But the word of God is all the evidence that we need to shut the mouth of the devil and close his case against us. The evidence of the word of God leaves him with the sound of the closing gavel echoing for all eternity. Now that's the trouble with the church. We're letting him win too many cases by our ignorance of the power of the blood and by confessing our guilt in response to the mental arm twisting applied by the accuser. We have the word as evidence to rebut and overcome. We discredit the devil as a witness against us through cross examination. God extended his mercy to us on the cross. I don't have a tinge of guilt about the heinous acts of rebellion that dominated my resume before I gave my life to Christ. The verdict of not guilty has already been handed down. I have the word as my evidence and testimony. Psalm 103.12 As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As you partake of communion today, remember that you're seated with Christ in a vantage point of victory. His blood has cleansed you. His sacrifice has established a new covenant, which includes the provision of healing for your body. Take your seat and partake of communion by faith as an overcomer. I repeat Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Father, we thank you today that you've given us a meal for overcomers. That's not just a wafer and juice, but God is a meal for overcomers as we grasp and embrace the knowledge of the new covenant and what you've done for us, Father. We partake, God, in holy awe. Let us partake together.